Okay, it is. Airplane. Uh, overcast day now today. This haze, it's been in the sky for... Let's see if I can see a fly over The haze, it's been in the sky. It is not. It says it's been in the sky for <clears throat> about three days now. It's turned into the overcast clouds. Um, I have misplaced my phone camera that I normally what I'm using to record my videos so I'm improvising with my laptop camera again and I suspect that I was in fact I'm pretty certain that I was attacked with some type of mind control attack yesterday where I was really um, feeling agitated which is how Chris was the day before when his heart was in breathing were being attacked he was also um, overly agitated, even for somebody that was suffering a heart or breathing attack. So then the following day, I also, of course, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of stress over his health and the ongoing concerns that I have and the ongoing attacks that I've been coping with. But I also, too, felt like I was, you know, um, m more on edge, more agitated, more angry than I should have been. So I feel that I was being deliberately affected that way with mind control weaponry. Anyway, and the other thing that happened is I can't find my phone. So that's another thing that can be done to me with mind control and it's been demonstrated to me so that it, I know that that is a specific type of thing, which is that um, what they seem to do is I'll pick up an object that's a familiar object like keys or a phone or something like that. And then I kind of space out, like there's like a, a short little memory hole. And during that period of time, I do something weird with it. I put it in a place where I normally wouldn't put it. And um, I think there's different ways that that's done. But in any case, what ends up happening is you've misplaced the thing and I can't find it. So I'm not gonna let it stop me, but I feel that, um, why am I, you know, why, why am I getting these specific types of attacks, the ways that the attacks have been changing lately? Um, those are all questions that I have, and I, and I definitely feel that um, this is linked to me honing in on the Courtney Love situation. Um, I'm not sure why this didn't come out earlier. Um, but before, shortly before all this came on, there was kind of this little, like it was, I call it the show of power, where it was like, they weren't going to let me see anything until I was supposed to see it. Now, I'm also under the impression that with a lot of people who are involved in this, there's been this desire to see if they'll come along on their own before, you know, I finally have to go, okay, look, 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 look. But that might be going on, or there might have been a genuine whoever's sending me information didn't have all the full information. Either they didn't have it or they weren't permitted to send it out to me. I think it's probably the latter. Um, they seem to have a lot of information. Okay, so... Right before... It wasn't actually right before we were... Shortly before falling asleep, I got... I don't know. I don't think I necessarily know if any of this is actually going to show up. Um, I got like a series of words and it looked like virus, then it looked like vice, V-I-S-E, and then I saw I-S-E, virus, vice, ice, but it was like I-S-E, like, um, so virus, Vice and ICE could all link to assassinations because it's pretty, pretty, it's been actually just really hammered into my head that coronavirus is being used in bioattacks to assassinate people with, and not just in bioattacks, but actually assassinating people after they're ill. So making someone ill as a plausible deniability so when they drop dead, you're going to attribute it to coronavirus and that this is what they want to do to us. Um, Vice links to the, you know, what the type of attacks that Chris was experiencing to his heart, which 
was a squeezing, you know, like a squeezing sensation, and also his his breathing was being cut off. And I've had I've had recently similar symptoms, not as bad as him, but he has an established history of heart issues now, after he's been attacked for so long. Um, he really does have heart problems, so in his case, it's way more dangerous any given instance of this. But in either case, they certainly have the technological ability to kill a person who's implanted like this in a heartbeat. It's just they want to get away with it, I guess. I guess that's why they don't just do it. I mean, I'm glad they haven't, but, um, but I can't forget that that's something that can be done, not just to us, but to a lot of people. Okay, so then I saw Virus, Vice, and Sprite. And Sprite looked like it was written in Sprite, like the Sprite soda pop font. Sprite, I thought maybe that might be a link to the mono video, which I had been talking about. I can't tell if this is even showing up on the screen at all. Virus, Vice, Sprite. Virus, Vice, Ice, and Sprite. Um... So I had the sense that this was linked to the mono video. If it was linked to the mono video, the, the little girls in the mono video sometimes look like sprites, it's like a sprite is like a fairy. But I mean, I, I definitely think this is the company sprite because of the font. Sprite is also an animation term. Like you can create a little animated entity and reuse it. And I think those are called sprites. Um, I'm thinking that Sprite might be a term also used in gaming, possibly, because of animation. So um, I wrote then, Chris was badly attacked in the heart. So I wanted to make sure I noted when that happened, in case I needed to come back to it, because um, actually something like that happened to me once, and I called the advice nurse, and I've been trying for quite some time to get that advice nurse recording. We also called the advice nurse this time with Chris. Um, and you can hear in that recording his agitation, not just the heart problems, but his agitation. Um, the advice nurse claimed that I was also, but I think it was mostly him. I happened to trigger him at one point. But anyway, um, uh, it happened to me a while ago, and I've I requested the um, advice nurse record several times and I haven't gotten it. I'll just get no response, or I'll get a response saying we don't have them here. And now I'm not sure I can remember exactly when I made that phone call. So I'm just trying to make sure I make note of these events when they happen. Sometimes that you know things happen like this so much, or they become constant. And that's why that's one of the reasons why they do make them constant is so that you stop noticing them or you stop considering them remarkable. I also noted now if I hadn't have noted this, I would have forgotten it. Um, elevated electromagnetic fields. Um, last night, it was really noticeably elevated around us, our physical bodies. 60 microtesla over me, like especially around my head, they were particularly elevated around my head, and they were elevated around Chris over 60 microtesla, and they were elevated over our bed. And around where my pillow was, where I would normally sleep, it was like exactly 58. I think that they can... Um, create pretty, I don't know how precise my phone is as a measurement device, but it seems like the electromagnetic fields can be pretty precisely um, managed. And like I said, there was that one day where I was at Providence Hospital and electromagnetic fields all around Providence Hospital on my phone were measuring 33, 33, 33, 33, which, okay, 33. Um, that's maybe giving me a hint about what's going on at Providence Hospital is links to 33, but 58 obviously links to 13, the death number. So there's lots of these hints coming now that, you know, they're trying to kill us. Meanwhile, as these hints come to me about, you know, now we're into Courtney territory, Courtney Love. Um, and I've talked about, yes, these communities are involved in killing people like as a group as a complicit group, and this is why they're getting cars, this is why we're getting street repairs, and this is why we're getting all this construction. 
Now, how does this work financially exactly is still, but I saw this Sprite, right? There seems to be lots of different types of money that coming in for this, including corporate money. Why would corporations be interested in funding murders? I don't have an answer to that yet. But I think it's partly linked to this game. I think that these are murders not of random people. Maybe sometimes they might be. I don't think they are, though. Even when they're children, because sometimes they are children, I think the families are being targeted for specific reasons. It's, just, it's strategic, mostly, I think. Um, there might be some outliers where it's like, we just want to do something awful and get it on camera. But um, I think most of these have strategic uses as well. And trauma is one strategic use. Training your killers is another strategic use. Um, causing terror to a particular community is another strategic use of murder. So then I guess, um, I'm not, I think I'm not going to try to sh show it because I don't think it's really showing well. I'm going to show it briefly and then I'll read it. Okay, sense of a peeled potato, old woman. That was just a sort of a flash vision. Now, next I write down, now I do not remember writing this. Um, a word I can't read and then the word redwood and something that looks like a three, maybe, or that kind of shape. It looks like maybe I'm trying to draw something down, down here. I draw a mask. I write redwood linked masks linked to COVID-19. Redwood linked masks linked to COVID-19. So in a dream months and months ago, I, I, I was asked a question, what if, and there was a name there, I can't remember the guy's name. I'm not going to go off on, on why that person was important. What if so-and-so, what is a mask? What if this person is a mask? So I didn't really know what that meant. Like, I guess I, I assumed that it meant that he was assuming a, a sort of a false personality. But it was almost like a mask is a thing. It's a certain type of person. And I didn't, I never had it since then. But this says redwood linked masks linked to COVID-19. Are they talking about masks that they put on your face? Or are they put, talking maybe about a person that's a deceptive person because meanwhile, a parallel thing that's happening now is I'm starting to every single close relationship that I've ever had in my life, it appears wasn't what I thought it was. Um, and I mean, even not necessarily close relationships, but friendships. And some of them were more deceptive than others. And it appears that some of the most deceptive relationships in my life were people that I actually trusted the most had the most affinity towards. It was a new black Nissan. I don't know if it showed. It's a new car. Another new car. Okay, so, um, and I think that the part of the reason why for that is that these were people who are watching me closely and who developed um, their friendships with me based on what they already knew about me. They knew what my likes were. They knew what my interests were. They knew what my history was, you know, unbeknownst to me. And so they could probably, um, and plus these people also, I think, are from families that historically are this way, a different way of communicating. They have a different way that I understand. And, um, so right now it's Roz Rezabeth. So may, maybe, do I want to just read the dreams or do I want to talk? Well, it's, there's not much of these dreams, but yeah, I'm going to talk about Roz, Roz Rezabeth first before. I read the second part of the stream. How did I meet Roz Rezebeck would be a good question. So now I know that this was one of these deceptive relationships. I met him because I was working with somebody named Marty. He calls himself Marty Vincelli. How was I working with Marty Vincelli? How did I meet Marty? Um, I mean, if I keep rolling this back. So the thing about Marty, I haven't talked to, seen or talked to him in years, but he is a musician. Uh, he works in the healthcare industry. Okay, this is a this is a thread that's weaving through now. Is people who work in the healthcare industry. So Marty works um, in an administrative part of. Uh, I think it was Kaiser he was working for. 
Um, I met him playing open mics at, there was this place called Deviate on 50th and I think it was um, Powell. It later became a strip bar, but for a while it was a, you know, a bar and they had open mics. And I think Marty was actually running this open mic. I think this is how it went. And so when I was going out with Tom Harrison, um, who also was sent to me and, you know, blah, 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 same pattern, right? He sent to me, it seems like I randomly meet him, but no, he actually was there to cultivate a relationship with me specifically. Um, so he and I, I was trying to put a band together in 2005. I played Marty's open mic at the DV8. Tom was there. Um, and started, so Marty and I stuck up, struck up a conversation and, you know, inter, interacting as musicians. And then it came out that he had this recording studio. And so a few months later, my band had broken up, Tom had broken up with me, you know, but I was still really trying to keep going. I wasn't, I was trying to be really determined not to let all of these disasters that were happening to me stop me. You know, I, I wanted to, it was this, I was in this prove myself mode, um, you know, because it's, I, I dealt with so much adversity and I was, you know, I was just going to power through it, right? Um, so Marty offers to record me in his studio. Um, and so I just had to find a, like, put together a band for recording purposes. So my, the guy who had been playing drums with me earlier, Cyrus, um, was interested in doing it. And then I found somebody for, um, you know, maybe Marty recommended somebody for playing bass. And so we put together like, you know, a, a band just to record this album. Now, the recording process was sabotaged in different ways. Same old story, same old story, same old story. Anyway, that aside, it was, you know, it was something <laughs> to do, but, um, you know, to, to get my songs down and so forth. Um, so, of course, then I got to, to know Marty as we worked on this album. Now, Marty invites me to a party at Roz's. Rosarizabek, and he, you know, he tells me, oh, this is Rosarizabek, this guy that was in this Kurt, Kurt and Courtney movie. And so I go to this party with Marty, <laughs> um, and I meet Roz, and Roz is interesting, right? And um, so What I later sort of kind of came out, or it appears to me, is that Marty and Roz weren't necessarily close friends or anything. Um, Marty might have shown up to a, a couple of Roz's events, but they didn't seem to have a long-standing relationship. Another thing about Marty is he seems to be connected with, his dad was connected with um, bikers. So that's sort of like a similarity to Mike Payne, bikers in the Bay Area. So I think that that might be some type of link also. So then I became friends with Roz. Roz and I live in the same part of town and um, you know, he would have these get togethers and usually I would see him then later on, you know, I'd visit him just, you know, casually as friends. And then there was, there were other things going on with Roz also. Okay. So there was this whole deal with me and chronic pain and pain medication. And then the doctors medicating me and then deciding they don't want to medicate me anymore. Right. And, and this is all extremely disingenuous because every single one of these doctors knows that I have implants in my back. Every single one of these doctors knows that this is a torture program. None of them, they're all covering it up. I don't believe there, I mean, there's no way that there's a single doctor, probably on this planet, certainly not in this town, who didn't know what was really going on with me way before I did. They're still pretending they don't. Um, and so what that means is, and in fact, you know, it seems pretty clear that um, I don't know everybody who's manipulating these back pain, back pain implants, but at times it is hospitals. I think I don't know if it's they take turns or if it's whatever hap hospital I happen to be attending, you know, or doctors that I happen to be attending that's doing it. But um, the nature of the pain has changed enough over the years that it's clear that it's you know it's kind of shifted hands. 
who's managing my back pain, torture. Um, so, in addition to managing my back pain, they seem to have been managing, I think they were also managing, they're managing my relationship to pain medication because for whatever reason, the only thing that ever has seemed to stop this, you know, severe pain has been opioid-based medications. If that's the only thing that stops your pain and the doctors refuse to prescribe you opioid-based medications, what are you going to do? You're in unbearable pain. What are you going to do? Most people will try to get opioid medications in some other way. Um, Roz seems to be have been a, a chronic pain patient for other reasons. Um, he was given he's given lots of opioids, right? So um, now. He seemed like a real friend, okay, and, you know, we would talk about a lot of things. And sometimes we talked about pain a lot. Um, but now I think there was ulterior motives to our friendship. And so there were other things that happened. Like he had this girlfriend named, what was her name? Doesn't matter. Um, she supposedly had worked for Warner Brothers in some administrative position or something. She told me a story about being raped by a, um, a roadie or somebody linked to Dio, Ronnie James Dio, that may have been, a, and she even said she was vaginally stabbed and things like that, um, and almost bled to death and stuff like that. That might have been a totally made-up story. Um... So things like that have been going on. And I think one of the things that happens with me is um, people will tell me things like that, really unusual stories, very striking stories, and if, with the hopes that I'm going to repeat them. A lot of people will repeat stories um, that are very striking like that. You're trying to figure out what's going on in the world. And if it's a false story, then who looks like the big dummy or who looks like a liar? It's going to be me. So this has been going on. Um, I There's a pattern with certain people linked to Courtney Love of trashing Greg Sage of the Wipers. I've never met Greg Sage. I don't know, you know, I have nothing to say about him, you know, personally, but what if I repeat a story that somebody else said that's, you know, false or, um, because Greg Sage had worked closely with Chris. So, um, Masks. So I think that maybe a mask is a person who's assumed partly, you know, false persona or has is equipped with certain stories that aren't true in order to misdirect someone. The person, I remember his name now, was Michael Whalen. The dream said, what if Michael Whalen was a mask? And so Michael Whalen is somebody who accused... Trey Shannon of Voodoo Donuts of running pedo rings. It was a big little, you know, explosion online. Um, and this was way before I really understood how deceptive people are. Um, I mean, why would somebody be motivated to get a go online and tell that kind of lie? Um, but now I know it, why. It's to get someone like me to latch onto it and repeat it because the thing was, before that ever happened, Back in 2014, they know, because they were spying on me, that I had contacted Voodoo Donut and said, look, I know you guys have been spying on me. 
I know you guys owe me money. What am I supposed to do? Collect it from you, you know, personally, because I'm not being permitted to see an attorney and work this stuff out legally. I think you owe me $60,000, you know. <laughs> I think they owe me a lot more than that. But um, So somebody knew that I did that, that I basically was billing them for their human trafficking activities. But then I've had other dreams saying that, yeah, Voodoo Donut is actually connected to pedo rings. Got a fighter jet noise now. Um, but what's a pedo ring? Does it count as a pedo ring if you've been had a surveillance camera hidden in my daughter's bedroom? It should when she was growing up. And I know that they did. They might, they might not have been their camera specifically, but they were accessing that. And they were, I believe that they were distributing it. I believe that's partly how Trey Shannon got to where he is. Um, does it count if you have access, how about access to the, you know, quote unquote, to the milkshake school in Canyonville, Oregon? You know, to these high schools where um, there's surveillance cameras hidden, apparently. That's what I think is going on. Um, or maybe they're not at the high schools. Maybe they're, I think they are, but maybe they're, you know, at the malt shop across from the high school, but I think they're in the high schools. Maybe they're in the bathroom at the malt shop. If you're involved in that, are you running a pet over? You know, it's different than actually having children in a back room. But that's the thing about these disinformation, these disinformation campaigns is there's truth in them, but it's not the exact truth that you're looking for. So if you stumble into them, you might start going down the wrong path, but the right path is right parallel to it. The, the targeted individual disinformation campaign is very similar. There is a, there is something to what these people are saying, but it's not exactly what they're saying. They're putting out disinformation. So you go along too far along their path, you're going to look dumb and you're going to look you know, like a liar because there's false information in there, but it doesn't mean everything about what they're saying is false. So that's the confusing thing about this. It's a very calculated thing and yes they are covering stuff up but they're covering it up by mixing good information and bad information okay so at 4 20 a.m the next dreams that i get down i write i have to get a name right it's leslie um i have to, I have to write down it's leslie arbuthnot Hey, Chris. Chris is, Chris is bleeding through the window. Okay, so. Leslie Arbuthnot. Leslie Arbuthnot is a name that I got. So I knew that um, Leslie Arbuthnot was um, Roz's keyboard player with theater of sheep. So what do I know about Leslie? Uh, so, okay, I get the name Leslie Arbuthnot. Then I get, then I get this music, Sound of the World According to Jim. So there, it's the theme music for this sitcom called The World According to Jim with Jim Belushi. Then I see an image of keyboards turning into fish and the fish are turning into what I call, to knives, but the keyboards kind of turn into this jig jag kind of thing, fish, that were also knives. So this is also kind of a link to the mono video where these girls have these crazy looking saws at the end of these weapons. They look like um, saw blades from a timber, from a you know, sawmill where you would cut lumber. And that's what these look like. They're fish knives, but they're, they've got these, um, saw blade edges. This is also a link to a dream I had in 1983 where I'm supposed to saw a fish. I'm supposed to kill a fish by sawing it um, with a serrated knife. But this is more than serrated. This is like a saw blade. Um, and then I say, I saw it. I saw it. It's in, in another dream. So this idea of a, a saw. Then the next um, thing I have is knife fishes linked to image. And at first I wrote of Brett. And then I scribbled it out and wrote of John. And I don't know what John this is. 
image of these knife fishes. And maybe it said here a link to pot. It seems like maybe it looks, I can't read it though exactly. And then I say a link to Brett, scribble it out and wrote image of Brett of John. Lots of world according to gym music and Audi rings and dialogue. So I see Audi rings. Um, I think that was partly, I think that the reason why I saw the ring specifically possibly might be because, um, you know, I've been taking all these photos of cars and stuff and um, watching Christian Amanpour last night, she was wearing a black shirt with fire like phoenixes on it and a necklace made of rings like that. And I didn't connect it to Audi on the TV show, but this kind of made me think that maybe there was a connection to Audi. So, so many of these cars are Audis. And then, so then when I wake up, I'm hearing the song, Hold On, I'm Coming. And later I'm hearing Turpentine. So I looked up Le Leslie Arbuthnot. And so the thing about Leslie Arbuthnot is there's, I've looked at, at her a few times. I tried to look her up online a few times because Probably because just being a female in music and, you know, I'm sort of like, well, what did she do? Did she end up going on and she played with theater? She with Roz in the 80s. And apparently, so there's there's some books that talk about these early days in Portland, theater sheep. This is one of them. Somebody gave me this book. In fact, this book even has the, um, what I call now the blacklisted photo. Doesn't mention that this was a Napalm Beach show, but this book mentions Napalm Beach and you know bands that. There's a few books that mention Chris. You know, usually they're about Courtney. Um, but hardly any, and most of them go out of print right away. Um, Ross, this this writer Melissa Rossi, Ross has claimed that she basically took all his stories and put them into this book. So there's a lot of fiction and misdirection in this book, but there's also some stuff in there that is worth um, looking at. It's just, you know, because there's so much fiction and so much misdirection, it's hard to know unless you have other types of information, what things are true and what things are not true. So here's a picture of the, you know, the, the picture that the author chose for her author pictures of ballet, a picture from her childhood. Um, so she spent, you know, quite a bit of time, she, I think she even interviewed Courtney for this book. She interviewed Roz. And, um, so Roz claims, Roz, Roz kept saying, well, he was going to write a book. I don't think he ever really has intended to write a book. He's written blogs and things like that, that come and go. But there's something else going on. Okay. It's not that other than just music, what we're coming to. Um, so the, there's, I can't remember because it's been a while since I've read this, but there's this story about, you know, Chris remembers Courtney's Casio. I said recently Courtney, you know, told Chris that Chris taught her to play guitar and he, he doesn't really remember that, that he remembers her with the Casio keyboard, which is what she was doing before she started playing guitar. The story is that she wanted to get into Roz's band and she wanted to usurp Leslie and that's why she took up the keyboard. Um, I don't know whether that's true or not, but you know, the story is that there was all this drama between Courtney and Leslie and Leslie left the band and it doesn't seem like Leslie has been play played in a band ever since. That's what it seems like. Um, What has Leslie been doing? She's, she's the weird thing about Leslie is she's usually pretty hard to find online. But when the COVID nineteen stuff started, and I was still friends with Roz, I still had a Facebook account which I don't anymore. I was still friends with Roz on Facebook, um, and you know watching his posts and stuff. Um, Leslie was on there. I'm pretty certain it was her. <laughs> And she was posting on his page and she lives in Pasadena. Okay. That strikes me as interesting because Chris married this woman who lives in Pasadena, um, who I don't think ever intended to stay married to him. 
um, after shortly after he went through rehab in the early 2000s. He, in fact, he left his wife for this woman. His wife was a prostitute, and I don't know um, what their marriage their marriage was like at that point. But anyway, um, so then she divorced him because he was relapsing on heroin was the story. Um, her name is Denise Hack Haskett. Hackett. Denise Hackett. And she's, she was originally from, I think she lived in Seattle, and she used to hang out at Satyricon, but she was a Seattle person in the 80s. So now she's in Pasadena, and Leslie Arbuthnot is in Pasadena. And they both kind of look the same. They both kind of have the same haircut and the kind of same style, similar styles. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And the other thing that kind of caught my attention is Leslie Arbuthnot appeared to be working for the healthcare industry. I'm not sure if she was in an administrative position or working in something, but she appeared to be working for the healthcare industry. Now, since I had this dream, I went back and looked up information about her and um, saw that she's linked to San Francisco. It looked like she lived in San Francisco in the 90s. So Roz is linked to San Francisco and Leslie's linked to San Francisco, but it, they seem to have lived there at different times. And Courtney is linked to San Francisco. And Leslie is also linked to LA. So Leslie and Courtney are linked to San Francisco and LA and Portland. Roz is linked, I don't know of any specific links between Roz and LA, but Roz has pictures of himself from the like the late 70s, the early 80s, probably the early 80s with like Joan Jett. And she's in LA, she's an LA person, I think, yeah. In fact, she's got that links to Kim Fowley. Kim Fowley keeps coming in here. Kim Fowley keeps popping in here. In fact, someone Roz knew. Okay, so Roz knew somebody, somebody I met at Roz's had links to Kim Fowley and somebody I've met at Roz's had links to the Velvet Underground. Um, So what's the deal with Leslie? And I think what's this coming to, you know, I see these pictures that Roz, would, you know, that people would take from theater as sheep and she would wear these kind of this kind of flapper type looking clothes with um, long pearls. So I think the pearl necklaces, you know, those are the pearls that were his eyes. I always thought that they symbolized blindness, somebody that can't see, but now I think they represent trophy, trophies taken after death. The eyes of fish. When you cook a fish, and the eyes turn white like pearls. That's what it is. So they're like death trophies. So when you have a very, very long... So isn't it interesting that pearls are what so many people wear? Like, that's like what people wear in, like, Washington, D.C. as, you know, classy female neck neckwear. Um, I say Washington, D.C. because that's where I think that's where I see it is like people who are involved in women who are involved in government and think they, they seem to wear pearls a lot. Um, <clears throat> there are also other types of neckwear that sort of um, imitate or evoke this, you know, things that are noose shaped or um, scarves seem to be like a symbol of protection of your neck. But um, she would wear these long pearl necklaces like flapper style. Um, and then, you know, Roz did this poster art that had some interesting iconography. He often used fashion, uh, lace, collages, um, images, <laughs> cocktail, <coughs> cocktail glasses that looked like the images, the cocktail glasses of Marino's Club in Arcata that burned down in 2001. It was built in around 1890 and, and burned down in 2001, July 25th. Um, it's linked to the, you know, it was linked post-prohibition to the Banducci family, which I've talked about before. Um, so Banducci is who Jeff Self married into the Banducci family. Mrs. Nichols is a member of the Banducci family. Her maiden name is Banducci. Her sister married Jeff Self. Um, and the... The glass on the doors of the Marinos Club, you know, is probably post-prohibition, pretty close to post-pro. It was a very old-fashioned building. 
That's why it went up so fast in flames because it was this old style construction that facilitated fire. Um, the glass in the doors, there were these swinging doors in the front and the glass had women in cocktail glasses, you know, women really reclining in a cocktail glass. The, the um, martini glass theme was there in Marino's. And then I looked and I saw Leslie Ann, this could be a coincidence, she lives in the San Marino district of Pasadena. Um, so what's going on? I think that Courtney, Leslie, and Roz are all linked to these fishes that are um, people being trafficked, harmed, <coughs> trafficked, and murdered through the healthcare industry specifically with implants. Now, when, <clears throat> when I saw, it was right in the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, <clears throat> when I saw Leslie making comments on Roz's Facebook page. And what's interesting about Roz's Facebook page at that time is Roz was saying all this crazy stuff about <clears throat> this has to be a forced cough because I'm talking about COVID, right? I feel like I've got dust in my all of a sudden dust in my throat. Um, <clears throat> the beginning of this um, COVID pandemic, Ross was putting these posts on Facebook about how he um, didn't believe in, you know, the social distancing thing and, you know, <clears throat> He didn't want it, and you know, he, he didn't think, he thought this was all a bunch of, you know, hooey, and he po posts, posts about his kid riding the bus, you know, at a time when I thought it really wasn't safe to ride the bus. He, he put posts about, you know, all kinds of stuff that involved physical contact, almost like he was really, really um, flaunting the whole thing and, and wanting to, you know, and people are like, Ross, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, you know, and I remember he posted even a picture of mushrooms and, and he posted like, I wonder if these are poisonous or I wonder if these are edible and people are, Ross, don't do it. You know, so it, that was kind of, you kind of like, okay, you're going to post a picture of mushrooms on your Facebook page and ask if they're edible. Of course you're trolling. Um, and of course there's this double meaning on mushrooms as well. Mushrooms being linked to, you know, to, I don't know why specifically taking finance. Um, to, um, I don't know where it originally came from, but taking finance, finance to engage in corrupt behaviors. Um, <clears throat> so now I wonder if maybe Ra's posting that because he's a sort of a, you know, maybe he's a type of an influencer or maybe he's influences, he's in being influential to certain people, you know, such as possibly me, that he was just throwing out, you know, basically bad ideas. I don't know if that was what was going on or not, but one of the people that responded to Roz was Leslie, and she told him off. Um, now, Leslie still to this day appears to hate Courtney, like hate, 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 hate Courtney. Is it true? Is it real? Is it really? I don't know. Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, <clears throat> So there seemed to be some conflict with Roz and Leslie, right? They've known each other since the early 80s, at least. And then all of a sudden, Leslie disappears from his page, and Roz says, I had to unfriend a bunch of people because they blah, 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 people that I've known for a long time because, you know, they were telling him off, and he was offended that they were telling him off about his um, behavior during the, you know, when the pandemic was really ramping up back in March. <coughs> So I thought, was Leslie one of these casualties, somebody that he knew from the early 80s? Uh, maybe she was, because all of a sudden she was posting on his page and now she's nowhere to be seen. I don't know if she's even on Facebook anymore. Was that whole thing theater? Roz's band was called Theater of Sheep. Theater of Sheep. Is that basically what he's been doing, is just theater? But theater with a goal in order to influence people, in other words, the sheep, 
And isn't it interesting that Kurt Cobain talked about, I wanted to call my first album Bleach. I wanted to call it Sheep. Why did he want to call it, what, you know, oh, okay, people are sheep. But no, maybe it has something to do with, you know, the sort of compromises he, he was making in music. And, you know, just sort of a wry commentary on that. Or maybe even him going along with this program, because there's another question that I have, which is, um, <clears throat> it's clear, it's clear, increasingly clear to me now that Courtney always, 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 her mission has been to destroy Chris and me, like from the very beginning, from the get-go. What about Kurt Cobain? I don't think so. I think he, I think he made compromises. I think he was involved with these people and maybe to fit in or whatever, he made compromises or went along with a program, but you know, wasn't into it, wasn't his heart, wasn't in it, and he, you know, he, he wanted to subvert it. So he was starting to subvert from the inside and maybe he thought, now, now, okay, so now what I know is that Courtney Love is directly involved with frequency-based mind control of the sort, not just focusing weapons at people and beaming them that way, but actually managing their emotions and managing probably decision trees, if not, you know, directly herself through working through other people who are professionals in this. Um, therefore, she easily could have made him fall in love with her, just like that was done with me with Mike Payne. That was done with me with Chris too, but um, obviously by different entities were, you know, and different entities are working, working these um, systems. <coughs> So um, it's possible that happened with, with uh, Kurt and Courtney and that she's picked him out. Um, you know, I think they had uh, you know, known each other, but I think that she picked him out. She might have picked him out specifically because she knew he was going to be successful. And, you know, when she, when in that song, Celebrity Skin, she says, you want a part of me, I'm not selling cheap. She doesn't just mean a part of me like a piece of me. She means a part, to get a part. And they were, it looks like there was a divorce in the works when he committed suicide and he didn't really commit suicide because he was forced to suicide. So for, by him dying before the divorce went through, then she ends up getting, you know, his estate. And, you know, yes, people have put, pointed that out before, but they didn't, you know, everything else just didn't seem like it fit in at that point. But now, Things are fitting in so that yeah that motive starts to make you know comes out again and you say okay yeah it does kind of make sense especially now that i see how people operate in this and that money is really very important to these people and status is important and power is important because i think of a lot of people who are um, brought up in trauma-based mind control they're made to feel powerless and they want to get power um, and sometimes they're actually made to they're forced into situations where the only way they can get power is through a certain route. <clears throat> um, so there's this whole thing with sort of this very intense and complex psychology going on with all of that. Um, so now I know she can manipulate people's emotions. I know now she can manipulate people's minds. Um, and I now know that the way she wrote her songs was not the way I thought she was writing her songs. So when she says things like, I'm Miss World, somebody kill me, kill me pills, no one cares, all this kind of stuff. This isn't how, I don't think this is how she felt. I think this is, and I don't, I think she's, again, this is theater, but I think she's actually talking about me, like projected stuff people were trying to project onto me and the way they wanted me to feel and the way I did at times feel when I was um, in junior high school, mostly. Um, because I think I too, they were doing a forced suicide, you know, at least forced suicidal ideation on me. Um, I never, you know, made any serious attempts at suicide or anything like that, but um, I think that that type of, um, thing has been forced on me as well. And so when she talks about um, suicide in her songs, she knows that 
maybe she had made this agreement to force somebody to suicide. Maybe the person, I don't know at what point the person was picked out, but it looks like also there's this mind control kind of thing where, you know, this is, this is the prophecy. This is your fate. Um, this is how, what you have to do. You're going to have to pick out this person. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do that. And then blah, blah, blah. And this is how it's all going to be written. And in the end, right, they've got these people convinced that they're going to kill me and they're going to kill Chris. And um, my daughter, my daughter is on this list as well. Um, so they've tried to find different ways that they can link it so that it makes sense in this occult mentality. And they've got these people kind of in this weird tranced out, you know, it's like a tranced out thing because it's just like, this is how it's going to be and I'm just going to have to accept it and I'm going to have to go along. You know, this is the kind of thing. So she says, you, well, you want a part of me, I'm not selling cheap. I think she's talking about he was getting, getting you know, yeah, he's talking about, she's talking about in the future when Chris or I see that she's been in this controlling position that we're going to try to get escape. She's going to, you know, exact a powerful price, even try to kill us, really. But her husband also wanted to divorce her. And so it was kind of, it's all, you know, this is the, this is the video where her and um, Melissa Alftemauer look like they're lying in coffins when they're singing side by side. So, um... That's what I'm seeing now is it's just the stuff that I thought meant one thing kind of means, you know, something else and sometimes it's the opposite. So I think Courtney, Leslie, and Roz are all linked into this um, medical trafficking system. And there's, I've, I already knew Roz was, there was other, other types of evidence that Roz was. Um, <clears throat> But I didn't necessarily think that Roz was involved in murders. I don't know now whether he is or not, but um, it seems like a lot of people are. Now, okay, the other thing is about who hates who and who's, who's in a feud with who and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> the feuds, Roz was <clears throat> appeared in this movie called Kurt, Kurt and Courtney by Nick Broomfield. And he's theatrical in the in it, and he's um, got these um, pill bottles of Courtney's, and he's talking about you know I don't know lists and things that she had or stuff like that. And he's you know some you know yelling at her, kind of like talking to the camera, um, telling her off and all this kind of stuff. So what he told me, because now I'm not, I'm a, li I'm a little less worried about him now, because I think his relationship with both Courtney and probably Leslie is probably ongoing, and maybe all three of them are working together, and they might be working with Chris's, I don't know to what extent, um, Chris's ex, I think she's pretty involved, Denise, so Denise H Hackett, I think it's the last name Hackett, is also kind of getting um, mixed up because Roz had a guitar player named Jimmy Haskett, it's Denise Hackett. Leslie Arthanot, Arth, and um, Courtney Love and Roz Rezabek, I think all work together. So Roz told me at some point that um, he and Courtney had planned out that performance on Nick and Kurt and Courtney. So that was something I, I didn't want to say at first because I thought maybe that would cause him to have problems with Courtney, but I don't, I think that he and she still work together. Um, so, <clears throat> I was like, wow, um, that's interesting. So she actually was behind, you know, it wasn't, he's telling her off to the camera, but she was actually was, they were, they planned it out together that that would happen. So that's what he said. And now I, you know, I mean, I had no reason not to believe it then, and I don't have any reason not to believe it now. Um, She, after Kurt Cobain died, she continued to have contact with him in different ways. And he's always written about her in a, you know, um, a pretty uh, disparaging way 
entertaining but disparaging. Um, but a lot of people have, and I, I kind of think maybe she's okay with that or even behind it. Um, what else? So he, he <laughs> so what about the Leslie Courtney feud? Was that even real? I don't know. I don't think so. And Leslie, looking at her over the years, what did she do? She didn't really continue in music, as far as I can tell. What she she shows up in a spin article from 1998, and being somebody who works for a gaming company. And I think it was a San Francisco-based gaming company. So I think that was when she was living in the Bay Area. So she's she's working like in the you know computer gaming industry in the 90s, and now and then she and then there's a um, there's a page, I found some information about her where she has a supposedly a, like a, some type of consulting or publicity business. And there's a website domain name that has no website, just like a blank um, WordPress page. So considering, you know, I've looked her up on and on over the years. Somebody who works in publicity and PR and all that kind of stuff, they don't even have a, a really much of an online presence. That's weird. Um, especially considering that you were working in the gaming industry in San Francisco in the 90s, you would think that that person would be pretty tech, ha you know, savvy and have an online presence. She had a MySpace page for a little while. Um, so a lot, one of the characteristics of people who are involved in the back room side of this is they tend to lay low online. A lot of them can't even be found online. Some of them you can't even find their addresses, you know, on the white pages and stuff. Um, so she seems to have moved from, you know, she, her degrees from Portland State, which is where both Roz and Courtney also went. Interestingly, also my daughter later. Um, her degrees are in French and German. So she gets a degree in French and German. She leaves this band theater sheep. She ends up in San Francisco working in um, online gaming. She's got a supposedly a PR company, but no online presence. And then she's um, working in the healthcare industry, all of these things. And then Roz, as long as I've known him, he's done odd jobs, maybe house painting or things like that, like gig work. But he's maintained a home, supposedly paid rent on this home for years and years and years. And for out the past several years, I mean, past probably, let's see, I think it's been the past 10 years by now, maybe not quite that long, maybe eight years, he's maintained a separate piece of property I don't know if he still has it, but as far as I know, he does. Where he was, you know, he supposedly had opened this shop of knickknacks and, you know, used stuff, but it was never really open. Um, I remember, like, coming up, you know, thinking about when he first opened up, like, different ideas that he could use and things like that to make money, but he wasn't really interested in making money. And he, so, so somehow he was able to pay rent on a full home and another, you know, building without a job. And he's been, um, he's, he's had health issues that has prevented him from working a lot too. So, you know, how does that work? So there's a lot of theater going on and there's a lot of deception going on. And um, what this suggests to me is that timber industry money is paying for a lot of this stuff. And that would make a lot of sense. You know, like, for example, Woodsy um, seems to have angered the timber industry. 
he was killed. Um, Judy Berry angered the timber industry. She was killed. And she was killed with, you know, first of all, she was almost killed in a, an explosion. Then after that, she was killed with breast cancer. So when somebody's killed with cancer, they also making money for the healthcare industry through their treatments. Um, Brett was killed for other reasons. Why are people um, getting German cars for killing people? I'm not sure. Why German cars specifically? It's not only German cars, it appears the Acuras might also be part of that. Why is Sprite in here? I still have a lot of questions, but this is it's definitely linked to this mind control, which is in turn linked to human trafficking. And it's just all different types of human trafficking. <laughs>